So yeah, we were um, planning to make chicken fajitas this evening and we've had a lot of requests in the past to share something about RV cooking and do a little cooking show. We figured, well, why not tonight? Uh, so we've just been struggling to get enough upload speed, so hopefully we can get through dinner with you guys. Um, so uh, we'll kind of stall here for a little bit, let people trickle in. This is totally impromptu. This is not scripted. Yeah. If we mess and, up, you're going to know about it. <laughs> and we have actually pretty marginal internet here, so there is um, actually say pretty good odds that this might not work. So don't get your hopes up, but we're just having some fun. So yeah. And hopefully an archive is being taken. Uh, we are using the Mevo camera. Um, hopefully it'll be solid enough for that, regardless of, or sorry, regardless is not a real word, regardless of the internet connection. Um, and uh, hopefully it's taken an archive and we can at least post it later. Um, so we're not chefs. Please do not think this is a professional cooking show. Um, actually, when Chris and I were first corresponding, I told him I don't cook. And um, I actually didn't do much cooking at all before I went RVing. I was more of a quick, I, I could heat things up and if it came out edible, that was a bonus sort of girl. Um, I've always been more of a business person, not a homemaker sort of person. Um, so it's kind of weird that I'm doing a cook, we're doing a cooking show here. Um, however, since we hit RVing and l working in a small space, we've actually kind of upped our cooking ability. We actually make a lot more elaborate meals. And the meal we're making this evening, uh, chicken fajitas, which is uh, a family recipe of mine from going back to childhood. Um, is actually one of the more elaborate things that we do in our RV space because it is a multi-step thing. Usually most of our meals are one pot, easy cook prep sort of thing, which well, maybe we'll do that one day as well. So. So what? So, what are we having dinner? You don't know what we're having for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I should start heating up the grill, I suppose. Yes, <laughs> so first step is... Outer window. Which cable do I have? Is outer window is there? You go. You see our O grill. It is a grill that can really you can grill for four to six people in it, and uh, it's sitting outside the uh, side window, which Chris is walking around to to start getting heated up. It runs off a little propane canister, or you can hook it into a. Um, one of the larger ones, so we do have the adapter to do that. But we find the little canisters a lot, just a lot easier to work with. So you see, Chris is prepping the grill. Uh, we have had this grill now for five years, and it has served us extremely well. Um, we love that the little legs that you see there they fold up, and then the um, grill actually stores upright in our bay, so it really fits for because we have pretty tall bays for an RV in our bus conversion. So, um, there we go. it's lit and getting that heated up so that we yeah, can grill I the chicken. Actually, that's a brand new canister. Brand I just, new canister I, yep, brand new canister I just put on. Last one was getting really low. Yep, I actually uh, had to take the little neck thing off. So, Chris is out there now preparing dinner or preparing the grill. And I thought I'd give you a little tour of our kitchen. Um, we haven't really shown the kitchen off too much over the years. Um, when we bought it in this space, there was a propane uh, standard RV oven and stove top. And one of the very first things we did, because the RV, if you remember in our bus, the propane systems on board were very, very unsafe. We had a huge uh, propane tank in the bay that was unvented and also leaking. It was also the electrical bay. So we decided instead of trying to redo all the propane systems at the time is we went all electric. So when we redid the countertops about a year after we had the bus, um, we just had the propane oven taken out and we had this cabinet made uh, where we keep all of our electric appliances. So in here, actually it's on my face and not down here, so okay. how do I get it? There we go. Okay, so down here we keep an Instapot, which is our pressure cooker, slow cooker combo, which we love. We've been using that for about two years now. We have a rice cooker and we have an induction hob. So all of our stove top cooking is done on this induction hob. Now I tell you, this is totally spontaneous. I haven't even cleaned anything. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You're getting this live and uncensored, <laughs> which we will be using. So all of our cooking that we do stovetop is done on this induction hob. 
and it, uh, we had wiring done to the bus. Uh, these are all 20 amp uh, plugs that we had put in so that we could do the high sort of things. Um, the wiring was suspect when we bought the RV, so um, we, we just put in, all new we put, in, we put in new, new outlets, and actually they, they were not GFCI outlets in the um, kitchen, so we actually put in a GFCI right in the circuit breaker box. So our kitchen outlets are all protected because we don't want to go sizzle and fry. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with an induction, uh, what this does is it works by magnetic energy. You need to use um, metal. You can't use aluminum. They have to be magnetic um, cookware. So it has to be something made out of ferrous metal. Because what this does is it excites the metal in here and the it's that excitement of the metal through magnetic energy that actually heats the food so it's actually just the pan that's getting heated there will be no heat that's coming off the induction hob itself so there's no loss of heat coming into the rv and we found this to be really ideal for rv use because we're not heating up the interior and it responds pretty much like gas and that you have control up and down and it responds really quickly it also heats extremely quickly like i can boil water and like four or five minutes. It's pretty cool. Or warm, actually. So, um, also in our kitchen, um, so that's where all the electronic gizmos work, and then of course the bottom drawers where our pots and pans go. Um, up here is our spice cabinet with pull-down spice racks. That's been working out really well for us to have all of our spices nicely organized up there. This cabinet is kind of just a mishmash of stuff. It's usually where we keep our pot holders. Um, up here is where our, we use Corel dishes. So Corel works great in an RV because they're really, they're really lightweight. They take a lot to actually break or impact. And you can get nice, pretty designs. So this is one of the first things we bought when we bought our RV was this pattern. We kind of modeled the colors, ironically, <laughs> after the plates that we went That's on the interior. That's true, actually. Yeah, we got the plates before we had the, the color scheme. <laughs> Um, also, staying up in here tonight, uh, we're having to use a booster and our mobile hotspot on AT&T to broadcast this. So the booster paddle has actually been brought to the floor so that yes. the Wi-Fi signal is closer yeah, to the, the camera. The, the, the Mevo, because the Mevo is talking to the iPad and it really uses a ton of data locally on the Wi-Fi network. You really want to have a 5, five gigahertz network and as short range as possible. Um, otherwise, the Mevo starts to go crazy <laughs> and hopefully we're doing pretty well. Uh, what else about our kitchen? Um, Did you show the knife rack and the, oh, the soda knife. stream? Yeah, so we have um, a knife rack. We just put that in. Uh, we use global knives. Uh, we love our global knives. Um, they're all a solid piece of metal, so there's no parts or places to uh, for bacteria or stuff to get into. So it's a lot easier to wash, especially in an RV where we might be on water conservation. That's why we decided to go with the all metal sort of stuff. And they just have a really great feel to them. So, um, yes, the uh, knives do ride this way, underway. So, um, we have a soda stream because we like fizzy water, so we make our own soda. Um, saves a ton of money and as well as a ton of um, trash and hauling cans and bottles back and forth. So, we just screw in the bottle there. We've actually had one of these since uh, we had the Oliver Travel Trailer, so we enjoy it so much that uh, even when we lived in a 17-foot travel trailer, um, the fizzy water maker. Uh, it, it saves a lot of space overall, mm -hmm. actually, because you don't carry stuff, and you can make your own flavors. I like for my morning drink, fizzy water, half fizzy water, half half orange juice, and a little squirt of cherry juice. Did you eat a bug? I did. A bug just flew right down inside me. <laughs> oh, you don't I might need some fizzy water right now. <laughs> you want some fizzy water? It's a little bit mad. <laughs> mm. Let me go wash my mouth out. That was gross. Oh, okay, so bugs apparently fly into your mouth here. Um, continuing on in the kitchen, um, our refrigerator is back here. It's an all-electric. We have a 12-volt 110 um, Dan Foss compressor style. It's typically seen more in the marine world. Ours is by Vitrofigio. Uh, we replaced the propane standard three-way um, RV one. So it does run off all electric pretty efficiently. And yes, we do run it off the solar. That's what takes most of our solar power. I'd say at least half of our panels go towards keeping the refrigerator up. Depending on the conditions. <laughs> and then the other electric gizmo that we have is we do have a microwave convection oven. This is the Dometic. 
Um, our RV originally came with just a standard little microwave. Yep, and um, it didn't even sit in there. Didn't didn't even fit in the space properly and stuff. So we actually installed this uh, Dometic ourselves. Um, did a little bit of carpentry work and did the trim piece fit. Ended up fitting perfectly. And so now we've got something that looks like it really does belong there. And we love having the convection. Right. All right. So. The meal that we are making tonight is chicken fajitas, and um, this is kind of the way that my mother always made them when I was growing up in Texas. I grew up in Austin, Texas, and uh, this was a meal we would do when special guests were coming. And we've got we've got fifty-seven oh special guests. So there's thirty-seven <laughs> special guests here. So, hi, right, you guys. We're gonna um, put them all in envelopes and send it. Send you the leftovers. Yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> Believe him. <Okay. laughs> uh, so first, the first thing you want to start with is, of course, your whatever your protein source is going to be. You can do it all vegetable. Uh, my mother used to use skirt steak. Um, we are a, I'm a no I don't eat mammal, and um, we Chicken, actually, chickens aren't mammal. Chicken, chicken is not mammal, um, and we do minimally. We don't eat that much meat in our household, so this is a, a special treat meal for us. Um, so I bought some hormone free free range chicken breasts the other day. And I mar started marinating it this morning. Uh, I just put a big old squeeze of lime juice in there, some garlic powder, some garlic salt, and then a little bit of cayenne pepper. And uh, this is one of our favorite spices is... Uh, Tajin. Tajin. Or t I think we're pronouncing it incorrectly. Yes, we are probably pr pronouncing it. Incorrectly, but that's one of our spices, so that goes in there. It's like a burst of lime and pepper flavor. It's really awesome, a lot of So the, the breasts have been uh, marinating in that all day, and once the um, should be grill is hot, we'll need, put those on the grill. The this is a fun meal to make as a group, because it's something that you do need multiple people making it. But we do manage, this is one of the more elaborate meals that we make in RV because there are so many steps involved. So there's the grilling of the chicken. It requires us thinking in the morning that we're making this meal, which is not normal for us. A lot of the time, we just keep fresh ingredients on board and we say, hey, we're hungry. What are we going to make? And oh, get out the Instapot and make some curry or something like that. So this is an unusual meal for us in that we actually are, we plan it at least 12 hours in advance. Now the next step is I am going to cut up some onions and peppers. And for this one I'm using sweet onions. Um, just sweet onions that you buy, like Vidalia onions. And then I like orange and uh, yellow peppers. My mother always made it with green peppers. I'm not as much of a bell pepper fan, so I usually go for the, these uh, yellow and orange ones. We keep our trash underneath the uh, sink, and we found this great trash can that you can put uh, grocery store bags on. So we don't feel bad about us uh, using paper, uh, plastic bags at grocery stores, because we actually reuse them as our trash bags. Um, and that really, really helps in a small space. Wash our peppers up. One of the first things we did when we bought our RV is we had the standard small two bowl sink. And uh, one of the first things we did is we tore that out and put in a large sink basin so that we actually have room for doing dishes in it, which is kind of important when you cook at home. Like I said, with the induction hob, is you do want to use something that is metal so you most of your Teflon coated things aren't going to work with it. Um, aluminum doesn't work, but basically what we do is, uh, do we have an iPad? Oh, it's right there. Um, we take our iPad um, case, case cover markets, yes. to us to a store when we're picking out um, new new uh, gear to put on here. And if it sticks to the bottom, then we know it's going to work with the induction hob. You really don't need like special induction specific cookware when you're using an induction, just as long as it's magnetic. Um, so just take a magnet with you when you're you're going. Um, Did you mention the water filter and the hotspot? Oh, yeah. yeah so the other things the in, this, right in yeah. the sink, uh, this one is an under-counter water filter. We use one that's called New Wave Stage 10. I don't need to hear myself. All no. right. So this is what so we use for drinking counter. water. We have a three-stage filter coming into the bus, and then this is technically a ten-stage filter for our drinking water. This one over here is plumbed directly into our hydronic system, which heats our hot water, so that we can actually brew coffee, tea, and other hot beverages right off the hot tap. So that comes out at 180, 85 degrees. So. Okay. 
Somebody wants to know what our beer selection for our dinner is. Beer selection. Well, I don't drink beer because I am gluten avoidant. But uh, Chris, what will you be having this evening? What's cold? Let me find out. I mean, yeah, definitely. The, the grill chef, it, it makes the grilling go better if you have beer. And please remember, we are not professional chefs. We are just making this up. This is completely impromptu. And I have dogfish head. This is going to be good. Ah, no critiquing methods or or uh, yeah, so like that. Me. We are not professional chefs. And, not and we didn't to plan be. this video more than 10, 20 minutes before we started it. So, well, uh-oh. Dogfish head. The, that's the head part right there, I guess. Okay, don't step backwards. <laughs> yes, please clean up your mess. Uh -huh. Yes, and our paper towels, we, this is where the old um, vent hood was for the old propane um, oven. So when we took out the vent, um, we just put in the paper towel holder up there, and we have LED lights that we put underneath. And so for ventilation, we just we have a fantastic fan that's kind of over the sink. Here. And so before I start actually cooking, I will turn that on. It's not fantastic. This one's a max. Max fan. Max, fan. max air. Max fan. Minimal ventilation for now. We'll pick it up when the. Yep. Okay. Well, back to the dog fishing. Clearly got a lot of foam to it, but very good beer from Delaware, I believe. Yes, it's made in Delaware. We picked it up when we were up at Assateague last week with Nina and Paul. Nina and Paul are currently exploring the Outer Banks of North Carolina. They're out lighthouse hunting. We are currently in uh, New Bern, uh, North Carolina, where we just got done attending the Marine Trawler Association's rendezvous there. We got to meet a bunch of people who own one of the style of boats that we're considering for our Great Loop Adventure. Some of these people might not know about a great loop adventure if they haven't been paying too close of attention. Yes, if you haven't heard the news, is um, we are actually boat shopping, as we are intending for our summer home to be a boat as we start exploring the Great Loop, which is a circumnavigation of the eastern coast of the U.S. Um, so it would be going up the intercoastal waterway, then down up through the Erie Canal, over to the Great Lakes, up through the Canadian Canals, and then. Um, coming down through like the Mississippi, Ohio, and Tennessee, then back around to Florida. So mm -hmm. that is what we are gearing up to do, start doing that over the next few summers, and then alternating by living in the bus for the winters. So we are actively boat shopping at the moment. I'm outside, tending the chickens. Ooh, these are the sweet Vidalia onions, which are my favorite type of onion. Popped up now, and those will also go into. There. I'm going to get some butter. Uh, sorry if this isn't coming off great. Uh, we have never done a cooking show before, so I have no idea how this is being shown. I'm just using Kerrygold butter, it's what we use in our household. And so we have two questions pending. Okay. First question is, and I'm do going we to turn on the induction? It just you turn the lock off, turn mm -hmm. on, and then I'm going to heat it up to 1100 watts, mm -hmm. the highest level, to start getting it really warmed up. Now it's going to what it's doing is it is energizing the magnetic ions within the pan, and that is what is going to be creating the heat that cooks the food. So this is actually having no heat on it. I will be able to touch this. Any heat that comes onto the stovetop itself is from heat conducting from the pan. So. Induction, very fun. It's awesome. It's great for RVers. And you can pick these things up for like 60 bucks on Amazon. Was it, I'll it, put a was it your birthday I got you this? I think when we first Yeah, so we first, we first moved into the, the bus, and I'd been talking to some other people, and got her this induction thing for her birthday, and she was not happy at first. I'm like, no, you're really going to love this. this. This is so much better than cooking with all the heat and the propane and everything else. And, and within two days, she was no longer upset about the present. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not someone if you buy me a domestic gift for yes. my birthday. It doesn't usually go over well. But it was well researched. So what's our questions? 
Oh, so the question was, did we stop at the brewery? Ray wants to know. No, we did not. We did not. We've heard the Dogfish Brewery is a great brewery tour, but we have not been mm -hmm. there. And um, then uh, John uh, Brunson wants to know, where is the cat? He's outside playing. She is so happy here. She's like almost buried herself in leaves. This is like one of her favorite spots so far. You can hardly see her. She's out there though, just frolicking in the leaves. Wow. Yep. I'm sure she'll be coming in soon when there's chicken involved. So as the uh, peppers and onions are getting sautéed and heated up, um, and I'll just stir those every so often to make sure I spread that butter around and everything's getting nicely even heated. I'm going to start prepping some of the side items that we like to have with our festivus. Speaking of side items, we got our counter extension. Oh yes, so when we took out the propane stove, we were able to put in this slide out countertop. So it actually is at the top of the counter and comes out and that gives us a lot All the of way extra out to space. Here. Tons of space. We love it. Particularly when we're doing things like this where we, we kind of serve them buffet yeah. style with just all the ingredients spread out here. Having all this space. Wonderful. And when we have guests over, we've had this actually be the guest desk. So people set their laptops up here and this becomes our guest desk when this is also doubling as our guest bed. Just cutting up a little lettuce to put on top. Which is just the two of us, I'm not going to do a heck of a lot of it. Because I don't think any of you are going to be able to join us for dinner, right? Uh, if anybody is in the um, North Carolina area right now, <laughs> technically might be possible. And it was just some organic romaine lettuce. Um, we find that fine lettuce in this form factor, in the heads, this lasts the longest in an RV kitchen. Um, so many of the other styles of lettuce that we'll buy where we love really fresh lettuce or we bought the bag sometimes in a salad style, um, they just go bad so quickly. But these, having buying by the head, seems to keep them much longer. So that's how we buy our lettuce. And what would fajitas be without queso? Now I used to be kind of shy that I use Velveeta for making my queso. I don't make it from scratch. And uh, when we were in Texas this last spring visiting my brother, um, who lives in Austin, and I grew up in Austin, um, I asked him, I said, you know, you know I was going to make you queso to go along with your fajitas, but I figured since you're a real Texan, you wouldn't want Velveeta. He says, what? We use it all the time. So I'm no longer ashamed of using Velveeta to make my queso. So I just slack off a couple pads of uh, cheese, or cheese product, saving the rest for another day. Put those in a bowl, put a little butter in with it. as well as a little bit of milk. I feel it makes it extra creamy, which is how I like my queso. I'm just gonna put that in the nuker. Now we are on a, technically a 50 amp hookup here at this campground, but we have it set for just 25 amps because we decided for maximum privacy to pull them forward into our spot so that we have trees all around our view, and our view isn't of the bathhouse that's behind us. So we're actually running off an extension cord, and any excess power that I use while doing this cooking is going to be supplemented from our battery system using our hybrid inverter, which you might have seen on some of our past videos. So I'm going to use the nuker to melt down my cheese. And if you, if this camera had smell-o-vision, oh, the mm -hmm. onions and smell peppers, outside. they're starting to get a little yeah. caramelized. So I am you. going to put the lid on there now that it's heated up so that... I'll show off the end power system in here. So we are currently, if this will angle right, using 4,000 watts of power 
but we're only drawing 2,500 watts from the shore because I set that limit. And you can show them the power pedestal up there. Yeah, okay, hold on a second. I can actually take the camera off the tripod and make it look easier. There you go, that's our power system. So you can see the power flowing in. And if we had a regular inverter, we'd be blowing the circuit breaker right now on the power pedestal. And now we're not, which is absolutely awesome. And, oh, somebody's asking about the cat. I just saw her roll past. There she is. On her leash, of course, and always within very close eyesight. And we have another slide out counter back here, which comes in super handy for working with things. You can never have enough uh, slide outs. Uh, slide. You know, slide outs for the RV, we're not big fans of, but slide outs for countertops, we love. Somebody, Ray wants to know, why are we thinking about moving to a boat? We should um, talk about that. <laughs> so, because uh, living in an RV has gotten too easy after 10 years. So we want something with new challenges and new adventures. This is actually, we, we did a blog post about it uh, about just a, a week ago. A week, ago. A week and a half ago. About our reasons. But we've always wanted to, to mix in living on water with our living on land. And we're not replacing the bus in any fashion. This is going to be our winter home. And then the boating will be our summer home and or, you know, we'll divvy up our time between them. So it's just a whole new adventure, a whole new way to explore. We're going to do the Great Loop where we can have, you know, a lot of the, the you know, going to the same places but seeing them from a whole new perspective by, you know, being on the water. So we're excited by this adventure. So what I just did to the queso is just added some Jack salsa to it. Now a lot of people use Rotel and we do that do that as well, but we happen to have some nice fresh salsa here. So I'm going to use that instead. Mm -hmm. I've got the salsa in with the queso. Put that back in for about another 45 seconds. I think is what we did. And as, as far as the grilling is going, I've been uh, flipping the, the, the meat every five minutes and then adding a little bit more, um, drizzling a little bit more of the marinade on top. And it's uh, I'm browning up really, really nicely. I should be just about ready to go check on that again. Show them the onions and oh. yes. Action cam. Oh. You see, they're getting starting to get some nice browning on them from the butter, the sauteing. And then the other element that we use in our fajitas is black beans. And these are some black beans that we made in the Instant Pot. Just Careful. To, now, you, now, now I'm dripping it. Now you I'm trying to give a, a view here. Um, so we just made these in the Instant Pot. We make up a pound at a time so that we always have black beans on hand. So we stash some of them in the freezer, keep some in the fridge. Um, for the beans, what we love with the Instant Pot is we just put in the dried beans, rinse them. Uh, put in some orange juice and some other liquid, usually water. Orange juice, secret. Yep, orange juice, some, some seasonings, um, plenty of water, and then we just put them in the Insta Pot for about an hour at, at pressure, and bam, we've got a, a pound of beans. We're no longer buying things, we're controlling the amount of sodium that we're using. Um, this thing just went off, Chris. I think it's back on. I don't know. Hopefully, you're back on. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's one thing we do with the beans. Um, makes it super cheap instead of buying canned beans. And we always have fresh. They taste so much better than canned as well. So I'll be heating those up uh, to go in to our fajitas. Mm. 
we have. Oh, okay, so, okay, so uh, I'm almost ready to bring in the meat. All right. uh, let's let me grab a plate, throw away the bag here. I have another question come through saying, Kath wants to know, is your solar system similar to Nina's and Paul's? We are currently looking to install a system on our fifth wheel using the same vendor Paul and Nina did. Um, they kind of copied us in some ways. On uh, the, so our... they had, an, so Nina and Paul had an existing solar that they had put on their RV before we met them. Um, and I'm just getting corn tortillas ready to go along with dinner. Um, so they had, I think, 600 watts on their RV. Yeah, four, 600. Four, four, 600. And then they um, wanted more. So they then installed with Marvin, Marvelous Marvin, um, I think they did another six or 800 watts, yep. and they have a total of 1,400 now. Yep. And uh, they, they, but they used the same panels that we have on our RV. Yes, so we have 800. Our, our roof is a lot smaller than theirs. Yes. Um, but yeah, and they'd also had worked with AM Solar in the past before, um, and they did their lithium install with uh, Marvelous Marvin too. So, yeah, so, so but the, their lithium install is copied what is pretty the style much like, we have. Yeah, they have a hundred more watts than we do, or amp hours on their lithium than we do. Um, and mm -hmm. we're talking with Lena and Publix. We'll be meeting up with them again in about a week, and we'll be with them for the next few weeks. Is we may do a Q and A on lithium with them. Yes. Lithium. Yes, we've had our system live for over five years now, and it's time to share our long-term feedback. But overall, we're loving it. So this is a meal we don't do. We only do it maybe once or twice a month, and um, something we've we've gotten really down as a team working on this, and we got it down to almost a, a, an art now. And uh, when we have guests over for dinner, we will make. Uh, this is one of the meals that we'll bring out. Um, it's fairly affordable to make. Um, you can do it with whatever types of proteins that you like. Sometimes we do it all veggie as well because we do try to stick mostly vegetarian at home. Uh, so doing chicken is um, something unique for us in our household. I've done them with tofu, which works pretty well. Just marinate the tofu like you would the meat. And again, the marinade that I used on the chicken that Chris is about to bring in is... That is perfect. I put a whole bunch of lime juice in, so... Yeah, I'm going to bring the camera to it. Oh, okay. There we go. Get the close-up. Look how nice and sizzled that is. You can only smell that, and of course... Every grill chef has to cut off a corner and taste it to make sure it's perfectly done, and this is perfectly done. Alrighty. Alright, now I'm going to slice it up and put it in with the onions and peppers. Now the marinade, like I said, is a bunch of lime juice, garlic salt, garlic powder, and then we use a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper and tajin on it just to give it some peppery flavor. Um, super simple to do. I started the marinade this morning when I woke up and remembered it, and you know, some people will do it overnight to give it a little more kick and let the, the uh, proteins break down more. So Red Bear would like to know if we're going to put our boat, our, our bus in storage in an RV park or in storage? Uh, depends on what we can find and where we decide to store it at yep. and what the options are. Six people joining us for dinner. <laughs> I didn't know we could fit this many people in our in our living room. I think we've had eight over for dinner before. Certainly we've had six, and it's it becomes really crowded. Everybody's sitting on the couch in one big long row. That's that's sometimes we get slide envy when our friends have big living rooms. Yes, because we don't have a dining room often. table in our bus. Uh, we took that out to do the uh, office area. But we do have a slide out table in between our. Uh, 
there it goes. Yep. So we have that's this. our dining room table right there. So yeah, the dinette, the original dinette in the bus when we bought it was right here. Um, so we took that out to do the desk configuration, which is where we spend most of our time. And then where Chris is sitting on the couch right now is uh, where we spend a lot of our evenings watching TV because across the way is our projection screen. Yep. So right over my head here is the projector. And then the screen pulls down across the way, and um, we absolutely love that. All right, so the last step before we eat is we put the chicken in with the marinated, sauteed onions and peppers, stir it up. And I just have it on low heat now, because it's already, everything's nicely warmed. I'm just at this point wanting kind of the flavors to intermingle a little bit. Ahead and put that over just a little bit. Check on my tortillas. They're nice and warm. Mm -hmm. You want avocado? Sure. Yes, yeah, that one may that, or may not be good. That one Demonstrating cutting without a cutting board, a very advanced technique, <laughs> which has less scars on our countertop. Yes, it has. This countertop is not holding up. It's just a general, what is called for mica, I think. And um, I'm not going to go with that one. That's the way it looks. Um, want to try this one? Um, sure. Those might not be ready yet, actually. So yeah, maybe we're out without no avocado. No avocado on our... Uh, no. Small spaces. So, uh, another question. Of, is, is, does our website have information about the Instacooker we mentioned? The Instapot, yes. So any of the gear that I've mentioned today, a lot of our cooking gear, if you go to technomadia.com slash RV gear, and that lists all of the gear that we use in the bus, mostly it's stuff that we're able to buy on Amazon. So the Instapot's there, the induction cooker. I probably should add the knives. I don't think I have the knives on there. Um, Soda stream and the sort of things that we use there are all listed there, so you can go look those up. And after the video cast, I might go add some links into the description. Yes. Um... Craig Walker wants to know what kind of business are we on? We do cooking shows online. Uh, Craig, uh, this is this. Um, no, our primary business these days is running the RV Mobile Internet Resource Center. So we wrote a book about mobile internet, and uh, we have the accompanying website, RV Mobile Internet. It's probably going to come in backwards on your screen. Ah, trying to line this up. <laughs> RVMobileInternet.com, uh, where we have a premium membership site. Uh, helping people pick out their mobile internet gear to be able to and, do things like this. Yes, and we test all sorts of gear and advise people and manage member-only forums and have reviews that have detailed analysis for members only. So a lot of stuff, and that's taken off really well. So we've been able to fire our other clients and scale back our other stuff because yes. we can just focus on serving our members now. We have a couple of mobile apps that we still are involved with, and we are actually partnering up with somebody to take them over on the development side for us because we just don't have time. The mobile internet stuff is taking up all of our time these days and uh, we love it. So. So Julia wants to know how do we get to TV? Is it satellite? And primarily we do actually can tune in over the air TV with the projector, but we never do. Almost everything we watch, we watch Netflix streaming, HBO streaming, and you know because we've gotten so good at getting internet just about anywhere, we can stream just about anywhere. Right. We have and we've all the tricks to get unlimited data. Yep, we have tracked down unlimited data on all four carriers, and we do carry unlimited data on all four. Um, so that gives us a lot of flexibility to use streaming as our primary internet source. Uh, and, and primary TV and entertainment mm -hmm. source. All right, our dinner is ready, and oh it's probably God. not fair to eat in front of you guys. Yep. <laughs> but you can show the final result. <laughs> and uh, Craig says we're living the dream. And yes, I have to say these fajitas are the dream. <laughs> Look at this. Alrighty. Disconnect. Oh. I'll take a photo too for the archive. Yum. So there you have it, folks. That is how we make chicken fajitas in our RV with all electric appliances, except for, of course, the propane-powered okay. grill outside, which we only use when we're set up for more than a few days at a spot. Oh. So we are set up here for eight days. <laughs> um, thank you for joining in on this very impromptu cooking show. I <laughs> hope it wasn't too annoying and was yeah. actually kind of helpful. We've and been reluctant to do these. so. And if you like this, let us know. Send your thumbs flying across the screen right now because we will see that. 
Um, and um, we will potentially do more little impromptu live things like this. And if you're watching the archive, we will mark this as archive and you know let, let us know in comments and stuff. That this was fun. So 